And I won't be time stressed either because mm -hmm. this is a longer version of something that was a short. And people a lot of times like the longer versions, but they don't realize that you can go to our homepage and look them up and see a whole bunch of longs. It's not just uh, what YouTube throws at you. Okay, we have got this piece that we're making here and we need to measure this curve accurately. Uh, right at that dividing line right there is theoretically the middle of the circle, but we can't really get to it to measure it. So what we're doing, we have pin gauges that we're putting in here, and I roll the pin gauges a little bit. See, I set it in here, that's crooked, roll it a little bit so that it comes back straight. You can feel when it comes back straight. Then you go underneath the middle of it, and you put your telescoping gauge in here and get your measurement of your telescoping gauge, which I already did this one here. And I didn't quite get them the same. I came up with 454 that time. I actually came up with 456 last time. I think I'm not being real accurate, but I'm also just getting dialed in. I'm going to measure multiple times, pick it up and change it when I get down to the concept is to get all three of your pins to match. It's not just, you could measure here, measure there, measure underneath, and then with some trig, you could figure out what you think the curve is supposed to be. But to really take advantage of this concept is we work until we have all three points at the same measurement. Now I have another set of pin gauges, so we will use the other set of pin gauges so I can actually have two that are not just one thousandths off and a measurement in between, but they're actually all three the same to match the curve as we go around there. Um, the plug, which I will measure when we're all done, I think it was three inch and one thousandths. I was just turned it down just approximately three inch. So, and the original, the design spec for this is a three and seven eighths inch diameter, but uh, if it's off, it's off and we milled it with a uh, long carbide end mill. I also need to, when I get there, measure both sides. So if there's a taper, I can work with the taper. And what we're going to do, we're going to make a bushing to go in here, and the bushing will be bronze. We'll turn it round. When we turn it round, there'll be a little bit, because of these square stop points here, where there'll be a little bit of a gap, where the round just has a little gap back behind them, but there will be a flat surface where it sets on here also. And what we'll do with that flat surface is we will make it so that there's a slight press. So when we press this in, it pushes it down and holds the round all the way into that curve. And what we'll do is after we measure this, we will make this diameter here to one to two thousandths larger than what this diameter is. The same as if we had a slight press, probably one thousandths is about right. Um, the real press, just like for a bearing in an engine, will be from the two sides when we get those to match. So we're going to have to do some more fancy measuring and planning here too. We're going to have to take and put a bar across here. We may have to grind one to get the right size that fits in here so that after we know what the diameter is, we can measure off of a known bar across here for how far these are above center line. So we have to be very specific with that because we want just a little bit of a crush. And then when we split our bushing, we can make the bushing with the correct curve out, outside, correct diameter inside for our bearing surface. But when we first split it, we're going to split it high and it may open up or close in a little bit depending on the stresses in it. Now in that case, we will be able to directly measure it above center because where we're splitting it is beyond center. So we can measure it directly with a mic and see how much it springs one way or the other, maybe none, but according to how much it springs, we will calculate how much more or less of a press we need to add to that, figuring up to center. So it gets a little complicated for something that's fairly simple. And uh, if we were producing them, we'd have it all set up with custom tooling to where when we're all done here, we'd just take our 1907 uh, shaper and we'd go in here and we'd just cut that with one nice precision ground tool that would make it perfect and they'd all be the same. But we're not set up with that exact tool on, and we don't even have a 1907 shaper. We have about a 19, 
Got one that's a 1943, one that's probably a 1940, and one that's a 1973, which is really a nice shaper. Uh, it's the same model as the one that's the 43, actually, but in a whole lot better condition. The one that's a 43, I've never used. And, and the one that's a, uh, probably a 40 or late 30s, that one I've never used either. We just took it and greased it, oiled it, and looked. The big thing with that one, it was a hand-me-down. I paid nothing for it. The man that had it before me paid nothing for it. Um, it's in pretty nice shape. It's sat outside for a lot of years, been greased, oiled again, covered again, brought it in, re-oil it, clean it up, and get it covered. But it's a 36-inch stroke, and you don't see too many of them that are 36-inch strokes. So that's what's kind of neat about it. The other two I've got are 24-inch strokes. So we're measuring this out. We got these little square cuts in here, measuring to the uh, top of it off of a parallel, which uh, one side had already been broken. So I just uh, cut through and that's the side I cut through and then cleaned it up and using that in here. Um, so wanting to know how far to those. Now the original piece that went in here and I could just do it that way, but the original piece was actually loose. It did not set tight on these ledges. I just wanted to, sometimes I get carried away. I wanted to make it tight on those ledges. So it presses in, holds everything snug against the surface. The original one, there's two of the original versions they had. One is a split piece here, and this is actually a separate piece where the ledge was. That was the original, original one made in 1899. And then sometime probably in the 30s or 40s, maybe even 20s, they made another one that was one piece. And then they had some remake ones that they made in 98. So um, that's kind of interesting. 98 and, and 1898 when they first started with this. But um, just the way that was done. But when I'm doing this, it's a little... I tried using just the plain uh, micrometer in here too, uh, inside mic, and you have an advantage in this because you're trying to sweep for the largest part on this one and at the same time the smallest part on the parallel. And so I've, I've played with this a little bit and it's just hard to get my fingers in there and turn it. Um, it's, it's just a little bit tough, but I did come up with pretty much the same number that way as I did this way. And what I was doing this way with the telescoping gauge is I swung this into sort of the center, let it swing a little bit in, and then quit and cycle around here to find where, while holding it on the top, where the best point on the parallel was, and then let it swing through the rest of the way. And let's see if I came up with the same number. I was coming up with... Uh, 2068.5269. And right there, I just came up with 2070. So it's a little different number. The other thing I've done is measured it a bunch of times. 2069 is what comes up the most common. So while this is not as accurate as far as an actual measuring method as using an inside mic just for the fussiness of it, since I've had eight, ten times that have been the 2069. That's the number I'll go with. The other thing on this too, and people say, well, what if our parallel is, is bent a little bit? What if we didn't quite uh, get it ground correctly? And it's just an old parallel. I did not regrind it. I cleaned up the ends so there's no burrs there. But the other trick with that is you turn it over and see if you get the same dimension on the other side. So if you're matching on both sides, I did measure it. The thickness is, is good on it. It's 125 all the way down. So if there is a bow, then you could counteract um, and average the two out. But uh, it measured the same either way I turn it. And then I'll do the same on the other side and compare that with my slight variation in radius. and. Just more fussy measuring, maybe not need to. It will make some difference too if when I split the bushing, if it doesn't change any, if the diameter just stays there, then it's not that much of an importance whether we're pressing in or not. But if the bushing shrinks in a little bit, and I didn't want to turn a half bushing. I didn't want to just turn a half bushing and try and figure that out. Um, 
because that would be the other thing you could do is turn it to the size after it's already split. But measuring it again is a little bit more difficult. Um, although I could, I mean, in reality, well, I'm here, you know, a lot of this I've been thinking on and working slowly and uh, this job should have been done a long time ago. It's, but I, I, there's a few just little finicky details and I keep rolling stuff around in my head. Maybe I will do that. But if I do that, it will still be over half. Could I split it and clean up the end? Because the inside and outside, see, they, they're, they're eccentric to each other. So that's part of it too, was I want to turn the outside, set my eccentric amount, because it's uh, 187 three sixteenths of an inch run out between the two, because the way they designed this. Now, the ones they made in 98 didn't have that, but the one they had, the original ones, were all thicker on the bottom so that it could wear for a ways before it was worn out. And I wanted to give that same concept back to it. I thought it made sense. So they had an extra 100 and, uh, 187 thousandths thick, 3 sixteenths of an inch in the bottom of it where it would get to wear the most. At least we'd figure that's where the wear's going to be the most. And uh, so I wanted to do that again. We will work for that again. And yeah, I'm going to wait until I split it and see the measurement. I will bore the two out first because that will get, be just way easier to get the offset and thickness that I'm looking for and know what my inside is. Um, be a lot easier on some of the stuff when you're setting up for production. But uh, we'll measure the other side too. And I'll see um, the outside. We're going to taper it a little bit too to match because I did get a taper on my inside that was cut with an end mill. So just a little bit more finickiness. Um, they would like to have their part sooner. And they have probably lost a little bit of revenue this year. They do their nonprofit, but they make a little bit of money running people around and so I will probably offer a, a check to them to give them some of their money back because you know I've had other distractions I didn't want to give it to anybody else I just wanted to fight through little fiddly things and and do this one myself um, and as it was even at that I made that one mistake early on there where I was distracted and that's something I'm finding with work in this shop, as you get more stuff coming through, I've had times where I've totally didn't do anything, um, but I'm at a point now where there's things for me to do, and it's hard to do that at the same time that I'm stopping bidding jobs, giving directions, uh, you know, just all the different little things. It's hard to jump back and forth and keep your mind in the game. It's easy if all I'm doing is threading some bolts or something simple, but when you get more complex stuff, it's not, it's not that easy. It's, it's easier being a one-man shop doing that kind of stuff. This, this would be a much easier job if I was just here and no employees, nobody. No, no YouTube, no film, no running for public office, no taking, helping take care of older friends or any of the other stuff that I do. Just come in here, head down, work in the shop. I don't think I'm going to get back to that again. I may get to where I'm not doing as many fiddly projects for people, though. We'll see. Anyway, it's lunchtime.